Hi, you know what I hate? Marketing bullshit. You know what I hate worse? When it comes from a university who should know better. Ah, oh, here we go. Let's take a look at the University of Bristol's pioneering chip that extends sensors battery life. A low-cost chip that enables batteries in sensors to last longer, in some cases by over 10 times, has been developed by engineers from the University of Bristol. Oh boy. Okay, right off the bat, we have some batterizer type marketing here, in some cases by over 10 times. Anyway, let's give it a go. Dr. Bernard Stark and colleagues in the Bristol Electrical Engineering Management Research Group, sounds awesome, um, have developed a voltage detector chip that requires only a few trillionths of a watt, picowatts for those playing long at home, to activate other circuits. The research group are providing samples of their chip to companies to use, which will enable engineers to design sensors that continuously listen without using power from a battery or mains. The result is smaller batteries or a battery life that is extended, in some case, by years. The voltage detector can also eliminate standby power. For example, the team have demonstrated a TV with no continuous draw of power during standby by using a voltage detector that is powered up at a distance directly from the infrared signal of a standard TV controller. Sounds awesome. So what they've actually developed here is this uh, UBM20 voltage detector IC. It looks like a little 5-pin SOT23. Great, I love it. And the device is sensor-driven. It requires no power supply. Instead, it uses power from a sensor signal to wake up. So it's basically an energy harvesting uh, type thing. And once again, here they are touting this television with zero standby power like it's going to save the planet. So right off the bat, I'm going to say that I love ultra-low power devices and researching the new devices, new parts available. This is fantastic. So nothing against the chip whatsoever. I think they've done a really nice job here. Typical applications, perpetual uh, sensing, event-driven sensing, uh, Internet of Things, grown. But okay, um, it's a nice little chip. 0.65 volts input uh, threshold and trigger, extremely low quiescent current of 5.4 puff at one volt. That's picoamps for those playing along at home. And the output uh, leakage open drain current is only 100 picoamps so that's really quite nice and basically here it is you've got energy harvesting input in this case rf but it could be infrared it could be uh you know motion vibration whatever it is um and basically it gives you an open drain output to then tr further trigger a power uh switch here which then can turn your um widget off and on be it a tv or you know a little internet of things Bob. Okay, let's watch their promotion As video. we go about our daily lives, electronic devices with sensors yeah. help us to stay healthy Love the and piano safe. piano background. In this video, we show a way of reducing the power consumption of these devices, in some cases by over 90%, 90%. allowing more to be done with smaller, more convenient devices. Sounds good. A sensing device uses power to do two things, listen and react. Yep. Both require power. They do. Some devices use most of their energy to do the listening. Hang on. An extreme Most? case would be an earthquake. Most? 99%? Throwing out a decent number there. Earthquake detector that listens for a quake for years and then reacts detector. by recording the tremor that lasts just a few seconds. So you've got to be careful what you're talking about here. Are you talking about an earthquake detector that just sounds a klaxon alarm when, you know, the building starts shaking? Or you're talking about uh, earthquake monitoring seismic monitoring equipment in which case they need to be running all the time continuously because you want to see what happened before the event and what about little tremors and things like that you want to be continuously monitoring but hey they do mention earthquake detectors so 99 percent of the battery is wasted but the question to ask here is how long does the battery last i'm glad you asked an earthquake alarm here it is you go into the frequently asked questions it's got a five year battery life from a nine volt battery here's another one which works off a lithium battery it's also got a five year battery life so where is this bs about this is their big example of something that you know it wastes 99 percent of the battery power yeah it might but it gets five years. So it's not like you can put their whiz bang new chip in there and all of a sudden get a 500 year battery life. Good luck finding one of those. Our team at the University of Bristol with government support have developed a method of eliminating keep alive power drain. 
using minute, insignificant quantities of energy awesome. from the event that the device is waiting energy for. Harvesting, this energy is switches not open on mains or battery powered devices exactly when needed. Five picojoules of energy and only around half a volt are enough to create a turn on signal. This is so little that many sensors can provide this without requiring a power supply. Sure, now, I certainly can. With no power being used from the battery, the system is alive and listening. So they've made out that you waste a ton of battery capacity just by listening and, you know, doing the sensor thing, reading the sensor and just waiting for something to happen. And hey, that's true, but let's look at the practicality of this, shall we? Let's have a look at some low power microcontrollers that you might typically hook a sensor onto and how long they last. So in a typical application for a CR2032 coin cell battery, tiny little thing with a modern low power um, micro using a wireless sensor network uh, application here where it you know powers up for a brief period and and does stuff and then goes to sleep just waiting sensing doing the sensing it, yeah, it's shelf life of the battery 10 20 year type stuff when it's just you know turning on and doing stuff so what problem are they actually trying to solve here because it's certainly not your typical sensor application battery life even with bluetooth uh, transmitting, you know, every five seconds or whatever, you're still going to get a couple of years battery life from a tiny CR2032 coin cell battery. It's just marketing BS. If you think your product or project might be better <laughs> if it had no Keep Alive power drain, then please marketing get in touch or request just samples include via our website. Everything. Like, this will solve all your problems. Oh, goodness. Demo of a TV that consumes no standby power. Hello everyone, today we want to Hi. show you a television that uses absolutely no power in standby. Absolutely so no power in standby. Normal television, we're measuring the power going into the television. The and the problem with your normal television is that That's right. when it's sitting like this in standby, it is using on average six AA batteries per day just to sit there waiting 24-7 to listen to see if you're going to press your remote. You can see our television uses absolutely no power. So there are zero amps flowing into this television. It's magic. And now I'm going to turn it on for you. It draws zero and then there. it turns on. You can Fantastic. see the power increasing and you can see it starting up. There we go. Woohoo! Too bad it's all smoke and mirrors bullshit. So what we're going to do today is we're going to show this television in public, see if people like it, hopefully it'll work. And then we're going to bring it back to the lab and we're going to do a tear down, show you what's inside this Woo! box. Show you tear how. down. So in other words, they're going to take it out to the gullible public and with their smoke and mirrors demo, they're going to get the public to react to, oh my God, this is fantastic. It's going to save the world. It's got zero standby power. Yeah, right. Let's go check it out. Yeah, well, that uses, that uses power. That's still using power and then it turns itself off. No, no, it's completely off. So the clever thing is, is it's completely off, no power being used. No power. You can still wake it up. You can still wake it up. That guy's going bullshit. <laughs> Let me have a look. Good on you. Dude, dude, see that box? No, 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 you passed it. See that box down in front of you? See What's that, that? wall ward? That's, that's the receiver. No, 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 look further back. Look further back along the cord. So there's no what? trickery. There's no trickery. The energy from that LED actually, actually, actually wakes that up. And wakes the system up. The energy from the LED from the remote controller he's handing wakes it up. It's clever. He likes it. He's sold. So let's rewind that a little bit and see what's going on here. You'll notice that down here, there's their little receiver box, which we'll see a teardown of at the end, and they'll show us the schematic. And this is a DC-powered TV, hence why they have this external plug pack. It's taken the AC in, and it's generating 12 volts. And you'll notice that they've got their current meter, their ammeter here, in series with the 12-volt line. So yes... They've switched off the 12 volt output of the plug pack and of course the TV is drawing nothing because it's not getting that 12 volt input. But these plug packs aren't magic. Where's that 12 volts coming from? The Oompa Loompas in Willy Wonky's chocolate factory drawing zero power? Give me a break. 
So how much quiescent current do these plug packs take? Well, I've got one for my monitor here, which runs on a uh, 24 volt uh, DC monitor. Ex please excuse my power meter. It looks like something's happened to the LCD just on the line that we actually need it. But it's uh, 300 milliwatts there, um, which is, you know, fairly significant, but that's watts. If we switch over to VA here, apparent power, it's four VA, right? So depending on where you live, you don't have to pay for that apparent uh, power. Commercial companies uh, generally do, but uh, th that meant, but the system, the energy distribution and uh, generation system still has to be designed to generate that four watts just for this little plug pack when it's got no load. And here's another one for my camcorder, one and a half VA, uh, 200 milliwatts. This one here is horrible at near seven watts and 15 VA. You've got to be kidding me. And they know this. They deliberately chose that 12 volt DC so that they could eliminate the AC plug pack from their demo. And wow, people. Oh, look, isn't it wonderful? So right there, it is complete and utter marketing bullshit. They're claiming that this TV has zero standby power when there's standby power in the plug pack. The plug pack doesn't magically go to zero power. And of course, they're not going to tell you about uh, other stuff like other signals in the environment that could potentially turn it on. This guy here is clever. He actually um, asked about what does it pick up the other infrared and stuff like that. And depending on the sensor, the earthquake sensor or whatever, like where do you set the threshold against false triggering that choose more power versus sensitivity and all that sort of stuff? And no. No, it's just, it's going to have a niche application, but try to make it broad application appeal. It's not going to work. Oh, it's got to tweet it. <laughs> Obviously. Let's have a look inside the box. Ta-da! We have a schematic. It. So let's have a look what we've got here, and it's exactly what you'd expect. The uh, infrared uh, receivers here, they've got to stack them in series to get extra voltage out of this thing. That receives the uh, lead, uh, the energy from the lead in the remote control, and that generates at least the 0.65 volts uh, turn on uh, trigger threshold at the input here, and then the output shorts down to ground like that because it's an open drain output. But of course, Open drain outputs aren't magic. You can't just magically switch the mains with that. You can't just magically switch uh, the 12 volts. So what they've got here, of course, is they're going to have a uh, MOSFET here or a solid state relay, whatever you want to use, to uh, switch the 12 volts. And notice that you've got to have a pull-up resistor here. This has to go to a voltage. In this case, it actually goes over to the 12 volt input here. And then they've got their current meter inside here so they're actually measuring the current flowing through there like that after the mains plug pack but you've got this mains plug pack you've got current quiescent current being consumed in that 12 volt plug pack they're being massively deceptive so there's a very good reason why they did this on a 12 volt TV and they didn't do it on a 230 volt, 240 volt or 110 volt mains uh, TV and actually switch the mains input and have true zero standby power is because it's very difficult to do that. You've got to have the pull up here in order to uh, enable that. You've got to have a high enough current uh, solid state uh, relay. And if you do get a solid state relay to try and switch the mains, if you get a uh, SCR based one of course these ones actually require a significant amount of uh, input current look 15 milliamps in this uh, kind of case and sure enough you can get uh, some MOSFET uh, solid state relays and stuff like that chin but they're typically uh, quite low current uh, applications like this one's only 60 volts and like either they're high voltage low current or they're uh, low voltage higher current and it's not magic and of course you're going to have to have this pull up resistor here you've got to have a supply coming from there tapped off and it, to power the pull up to enable your relay but hey to be fair they do recognize this and mention it in the data sheet so sure, this thing's going to have a bunch of uh, niche uses. I'm sure it might be, you know, it might even be reasonably popular, but as the universal panacea for uh, standby power in TVs and every other consumer product, no, it's not magic. It's an open drain output. They don't work magically. You've got to have that power to switch it on. And high power devices like TVs, they're another ball game. And if equipment manufacturers want to 
develop a TV that uh, takes, you know, bugger all standby power. They don't need your chip. They just need to put, you know, some eff extra effort and some money into actually designing it this way using something like this uh, TI chip, which is designed to uh, have a separate wake up here and actually detect when the TV wakes up or when the product wakes up and then whoop, switch the power through. And it draws like, you know, tens of five, 10 milliwatts or something in standby. They don't need your energy harvesting whiz bang widgety thing it's just not needed but hey you know that's not what your investors want to hear right now just to be fair their widget is doing something here because the tv itself here is actually uh going from uh taking x amount of standby because it will have uh, its own standby power in addition to the uh, quiescent standby supply of the plug pack here. So it is doing something. It's reducing that to zero, but using this as uh, like your prime demo for selling this. So I'm sorry, but your chip is not going to be useful to the likes of TV manufacturers and other uh, mains powered products like that because that's not where the losses are. They don't need a zero input power, five pico watt, you know, uh, harvesting the energy from the infrared light to be of use. The losses are elsewhere in the power supply and other places. It's really of main application for sort of niche uh, you know, a small sensor type, low power energy harvesting stuff. So this is a ridiculous demo and I think you know it. We hope you like our standby free television. No, so I didn't. It was a smoke and mirrors. Just very deceptive. You should be ashamed. These guys know that what they're doing is, you know, pretty deceptive. Deliberately chose the 12 volt DC so that you could show to people and probably investors, and I believe they got government grants and stuff for doing this research and things like that. So they've got to show the results. And then, of course, the marketing department of Bristol University, I assume they've got, well, you know, something like that, takes a marketing spin, takes over, and oh, yeah, we can apply this to everything, every single product in the world. It, like, no. Okay, you developed a nice little chip, hats off, I like it, but please just stop with the marketing BS. Ah, oh, unbelievable. So anyway, I hope you found that interesting and informative, and whenever you see, start seeing marketing headlines like that, just stop and think a bit, analyze it, and you'll find, yeah, they're usually exaggerating things. Anyway, catch you next time.